Hello everyone and welcome back. How are you? So my name is Nitzan Steinberg, Grandmaster, and today we will start with a session of very interesting and instructive videos about the famous opening, the Sicilian Night Off. In each video in this tutorial, I will show you one game of mine and we will understand and study all the complexity in this really exciting night of opening. So you will learn here theory, ideas how to develop your pieces, tactics of course, strategics, game plan and all of this for both sides, white and black. You are really welcome to ask any questions in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them all. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start. So this game I played against a very strong and young player with the name of Baglan Isat from Turkey. I played this game eight years ago in Palic tournament in Serbia. Um, I think this was round number six or eight, I'm not sure. Um, but it was very, very interesting to see. I played with black pieces and let's see what gone in the opening. So he played the move e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and now I played the move a6. And this position called knight off, okay? The first... Um, player ever that played this variation was called Nidorf. So uh, unfortunately he's not in our life anymore uh, and he passed away uh, but he's, he was just incredible player and he's the one that uh, played his just you know uh, incredible opening that I really like to play with both sides also with white and also with black so thank you very much and uh, let's see it. So he played the move bishop to e2. So in this position, uh, we have so much moves for white. For example, a4. We have a3 also. h4 that I played a lot with white. Bishop to e3. Bishop to g5. f4 move. Queen f3. Um, f4 we said already, right? Bishop d3. Bishop c4. Knight b3 also. h3. Uh, g3 f3 so so much moves in uh, number six right and uh, so it's it's very interesting to see so much theory here so much games were played and i also can recommend recommend you the best players in the world that are playing knight of with the black pieces we have grandmaster boris gelfand one of the best in knight of of course maxim vashiela graf also, you know, just incredible person and also very, very strong one in Nidorf. And the third one that I really can recommend you, it's uh, Wojtaszek from Poland. So uh, Boris Gelfand, of course, one of my friends also. He's one of the best players in the world in history for me and is my idol from Israel. And we have also Wojtaszek from Poland and Maxim Vashela Graf from France. So in this game, he played the move bishop to e2. And now we have a lot of options to play. Um, the most common is e5 or uh, e6, right? I played in this game e6, but we will see, you know, also e5 in the next chapters, maybe. So e6, and now he played the move a4. So after a4, we must understand, black wants to play the moves queen c7, bishop e7, b5, bishop b7, knight bd7, rook c8. This is how we develop our pieces in black with the black side. So a4, or oh, sorry. So after a4, the point it is that just is covering the b5 square, right? So now b5 is not working because a takes b5 and thank you for the pawn. So a4, the point is you are just avoiding from black to play the move b5 with bishop b7. So in this position, 
we, we must understand that a4, of course, there is advantages for this move because he's just defending the b5 square, but the disadvantages that the square on b4 will be weak. And which piece can we put on b4 that will do a lot of work? I can tell you, the knight from b8, okay? So after a4, I think the most a good move in this position for example is maybe to play knight c6 immediately also maybe queen c7 and after it maybe to play around knight c6 bishop e7 and knight b4 so uh, unfortunately in this uh, position i played not a good move at all i played the move b6 and this is something uh, bad to see why because when we are playing b6 before we are playing the move queen c7 there is very strong move for white you can stop the video now and think by yourself but white can play the move bishop to f3 and it's very important move to know right because after bishop b7 e5 is a very strong attack uh, for white so after d takes e5 of course bishop b7 e takes d4 bishop a8 and this position is just game over after takes takes b takes e3 and exchange up for for white and of course uh, two bishops after e5 there is after bishop takes f3 just queen takes f3 and the same is here after knight takes e6 takes and queen takes a8 and exchange up white is just winning so after yeah bishop f3 i have a problem so i need to play the move rook a7 i think and this is looks not so nice right he's playing the move castle maybe bishop e3 maybe a5 yeah it's clearly better for white so my opponent didn't play the move bishop a3 but he played the move f4 and now i play the move bishop b7 bishop a3 and now queen to c7 covering this uh, bishop on b7 and now e5 is not working because just d takes is 5 and we are protecting the bishop on b7 so we play the move castle and now we play the move knight bd7 queen e2 and rook c8 we are bringing another piece uh, into the development right so we have bishop here we have knight here knight here and rook and the queen are in this very important uh, line right the c row is very and uh, not, not row of course column uh, is very important is file right uh, so much words to explain this file so as you remember the first move in our game was e4 c5 and already in the third move we exchanged the c5 pawn against the d4 pawn right so we opened the c file and our pieces the queen on c7 the rook on c8 will work together amazingly in this c file so we must control it why it's so important because this knight on c3 will be uh, you know annoying uh, by our rook okay and also the c2 pawn will be weak in some ideas i will show you it in also in this game so he played the move knight to b3 the point was also to play the move bishop a e3 also maybe he thought about that maybe i will want to play e5 and after e5 for example knight f5 i will take the pawn on f4 and putting the knight on e5 and it's very important square in the Sicilian we will talk about it of course so he played the move knight b3 he didn't want to bring some options to play e5 and just avoiding it from with the knight b3 I played the move bishop e7 makes a lot of sense and now after bishop e3 you know the first move that you must think about is to play castle right because we need to play castle always our coaches and our you know uh, studies in youtube we must castle but you know in chess it's not something uh, you, you cannot uh, resist right because in such ways like you playing castle maybe g4 g5 will come very fast and white will attack you right so you must think about it and i really like to be flexible in sicilian so i played the move queen to b8 my point was to maybe sacrificing the rook on c3 and to take the pawn sorry on e4 okay this is something very common in the sicilian Nidorf to exchange to give the exchange uh, for the knight on c3 
For example, I can show you, for example, king h1. Maybe I can take, take, knight takes e4. And after it, you will play the move castle, rook coming to c8. These double pawns will be weak. And I have very strong center, bishop f6, d5, knight c, uh, dc5. So I I'm doing great here. So rook c3 uh, makes a lot of sense in the Sicilian knight off. And it's something that you must know about these openings but he played the move rook a e1 and now unfortunately after rook c3 it's not so good because b takes c3 knight takes c4 and i think just bishop d4 because now g the g7 pawn is under attack and also the knight on e4 so we must be um you know to check twice before we are uh, um, giving the exchange on c3 so i played the move just castling bishop c1 uh, because now rook c3 it's it's very important right because b takes c3 knight takes c4 and now the g7 square is already protected by the king so we play the move bishop c1 because now after rook c3 b takes c3 we cannot take the, the pawn on e4 so i play the move queen to a8 and now he played the move g4 and this is maybe one of the most important positions in this game i think in general we must understand that g5 and maybe, I don't know, maybe bishop g2, queen h5, knight, rook f3, rook h3. It's a little bit annoying. White is attacking us in the king side, right? So I really want to ask you, how can we attack him when he is attacking us in the king side, right? So for example, the first thought is maybe to play e5. But the problem that he will play g5, knight e8 and f5. And as you can see, he has so much control in the center and also in the king side. Maybe bishop g4, f6, g6, queen g2. So much attack and also knight d5 in some ideas. So our very bad pieces here, right? They're doing nothing. So for example, let's see maybe d5. But unfortunately after e5, knight e4, bishop takes e4, d takes e4, bishop e3. Our bishop and a queen are doing nothing, right? So it seems like now white will have the opportunity maybe to play king h1, rook g1, maybe g5, maybe f5 and somehow to attack knight d4 maybe, right? And our, our pieces in the queen side not doing enough, okay? So I thought how can I do something to, to protect from g5? I played the move h6 and my idea was a little bit more um you know uh complex from from this position after g5 i will take it and play knight h7 and now just knight e5 will bring and this square from the knight is just amazing he's controlling everything here right he's very strong and nobody can uh, can push him right away so it's it's very good i think h4 knight e5 and yeah it's it's brilliant position i think for black rook c4 rook is here also knight is covering this pawn on f7 maybe after it knight f8 knight d7 it seems very strong and i don't believe about uh, the white's attack here so he played the move h4 it makes a lot of sense because now g5 is a threat but no i will play the move d5 and after e5 knight e4 bishop takes d takes don't forget the h4 pawn is under attack because after bishop e3 we will just take the pawn on h4 and we are up a pawn so in this position he played the move g5 and now i really want to ask you what is your move i really recommend you to stop the video now and think by yourself which move do you prefer for black and i will tell you the move is e3 why? Because we opening the bishop, opening the queen, and we have so, you know, large uh, diagonal here, h1, a8. We are opening our bishop and a queen. We are sacrificing a pawn, but this diagonal maybe will win our game. So we played the move bishop to e3, and now I thought, how can I win this game? I want to bring this rook here. How can I do it? Even it possible in chess? 
Yes, it's possible, but how can I do it? So I wanted to take the g5 pawn, but h takes g6 and play the move king g7, rook h8. But unfortunately, now he will play the move queen h2. And maybe white will bring the checkmate here after queen h6, rook f2, rook h2, and oh no, oh no, I will, I will lost it, right? So I play the move g6. The point is that I now I want to take the g5 pawn, h takes, king g7, and rook h8, and there is no queen h2, right? So we play the move h5, h takes g5, h takes g6, and now I play the move king to g7. Quiet move. I want to bring the rook to h8, rook h1, and this will be a checkmate here very, very soon. He took the pawn on g5, f takes g6, and now everything is under control, rook will come to h8, and this will be a game over because this king is so vulnerable here. Rook f6, rook h8, queen d3, g6 pawn is under attack and it will be a checkmate, but no, knight takes c5, queen d4, rook h1 check, king f2, rook h2 check, king g1, rook g2, Rook c h8, of course, we are bringing another rook into the game. And now queen takes c5, rook g2, king f1, and rook h1. We checkmate after bishop g1, rook h takes g1. It's a checkmate on the board. So as you can see, who won me this game? I will tell you, this bishop, brilliant bishop that did a lot here and great job and also the queen here so all of this game you can see in the sicilian so much tactics so much plans here so this was the first part of the nidorf and we learn here a lot i think also for black also for white white wants to uh, attack us in the in the king side black will push on the queen side uh, you know via a c file it's very important and you know all of this complexity in one game that finished like this position and yeah it's it, it's really it's really uh, i think amazing that this bishop and this queen are doing the lot here and we bring the rooks to give a checkmate to the white king so ladies and gentlemen i really appreciate every comment every like and of course subscribe my channel don't forget so thank you very much See you soon in part number two. Who do you think will win the next game in the Sicilian Nadov? Me or my opponent? See you soon. Bye-bye.